Hi, this is Talon Jane. This is FTT214, uh, the hand checkering lab. This is week one, and uh, we're gonna be going over our, our week one assignment two. Uh, for this, the very first thing they ask us to do for whatever reason is an unboxing. It's unboxed. Our I really struggle to call this wood stock, you know? our wood stock, our checkering tool with the 90 degree cutter and the 18 LPI cutter, which are the little cutters right here that come with it. Got both of them. And then in addition, we've got the checkering gauge and the lab book that's it that's what you get for this course uh, this I got an issue with this SDI if you see this this is crap okay I've seen all the other videos on YouTube and I've talked to all the forums and everybody else is getting you know kind of uh, some type of uh, stock this is a block of wood and now in my first week, I gotta somehow turn this into somewhat of a stock so that we can do uh, checkering through the rest of this. So, but either way, uh, what I've done is I've traced a stock onto here, right? And what I used for a stock, because this is incredibly short, is a old, um, it's like a Mossberg 500 wood stock that comes on there. Um, it's actually in New Haven, it's, it's pretty old. It was my grandpa's and uh, it's got some damage to it. There's been some gluings and stuff like that. So, you know, this is a beautiful piece of wood to just hack up, you know? So I don't know why SDI decided to spend the money on a beautiful piece of wood, but then not make it a stock, you know? So we're gonna go ahead and do that and make it somewhat of a stock. Uh, so, um, hopefully there's enough wood left over right here for the front grip, which I'm not going to worry about in this class. I'm just going to get this. So if I can get this piece cut out and rough shaped, that should be enough for our week one. So, uh, the rest of this video, I'm not going to explain because hopefully you don't have to do this. So, uh, either way, I'm going to head out to the shop and I'm going to cut this out on a bandsaw and um, yeah, it's like double the thickness it needs to be. So we'll probably plane it down, which this is just a ton to get to the point where this hand checkering lab class, we're doing something building a stock. I just finished the stock making class. That was the last class. Now I'm making another stock for this class. So excuse my frustration. Thanks. Bye. So I'm really impressed with uh, the way this wood looks. I mean, it's it's really, really pretty and it's got some burrowing in it. And uh, normally I would just stick this in a planer and plane it down to where I want. Um, but in the interest of time, and also because I'd like to save some of this wood right here, would be good for knife scales or, you know, pistol scales or something like that. 
I'm going to uh, try and attempt to resaw this. Uh, it's a pretty thick back here at the back. Um, it's about as much as I would want to do on this little bandsaw. Uh, but I'm going to try and cut off this piece and then I'll be able to plane this other side kind of to where I want. So I'm going to cut on the, uh, giving myself more side on the stock and uh, we'll see how it goes. You might see me cuss here in a minute when my bandsaw blade breaks. successfully get ourselves down to here at least uh, so now I'm gonna chuck this up into uh, my wood clamp over here and I'm gonna grab some pretty aggressive sanding discs and I'm gonna start knocking this down to a shape that is more conducive to what we're looking for All right, starting to get kind of a rough shape here. Very rough. However, we're gonna go ahead and step it down that 36 a grit to an 80 grit. Okay, got the rough shape all finished. Not too bad, about the right length. Got a good 
good shape to it. Now we're gonna switch over to a disc sander with a heavier grit and clean this back up. with 80 grit done looking pretty good starting to get a good feel to it too we're gonna go ahead and step it up through the grits till we have something that looks a lot more like a gun stock here we are after 120 you can still see there's a little wave right there I gotta get out. And just a couple little spots, a couple of spots on this side. Um, and those I can really see more in the camera than I can see in real life. All right, I'm gonna go get some water to raise the grain on this. Um, and then sand it again. All right, I have wet sanded this thing to the max here. And you can see now we've got, and it sure is pretty, look at those colors. So, <clears throat> I am satisfied at this point that I will be able to do a really nice pattern right here and right here for the uh, checkering class. But I'm also really happy with just how this has turned out. It's good practice. So I'll see you back inside. First, I need to apologize for my pissy attitude at the beginning of this video. Uh, you know, it's just frustrating when uh, you feel like you've got one thing in mind and then something else happens. But, you know, in life, when you're pissy, you just get over it and you move forward. And uh, we moved forward and we were able to create uh, this kind of mock version of something similar to like a Mossberg 500 stock. That's what I used as my template. So here we are. Uh, they're very similar. Uh, could be used as a Mossberg 500 stock if I decide to go that route. Um, this wood is absolutely beautiful. You cannot tell right now, but if I was to oil it up or whatever, uh, it's just got some really cool colorings in it. Uh, but this, this turned out, you know, perfect for this class. I'll be able to do, you know, a nice checkering up this side or this side. And, uh, yeah, so I'm happy with how this turned out. I'm less frustrated than I was before. I'm still a little frustrated because I don't feel like most people that are taking this class are going to have the skill set or the tools to knock something like this out in a couple hours. Um, however, it is possible. So you saw I used a bandsaw and a grinder with a um, flap disc on it, a couple different flap discs and an orbital sander uh, with, with, you know, different grits and then... Um, you know, we ended up hand sanding the, the final finish on here. It's at 320 right now. Um, you know, obviously if it was gonna be a gun stock for sure, I'd go higher, probably 400 or 600. But for now, this is, is plenty up for what we need. It's nice and smooth. It's got a good finish. It feels nice and smooth. And, uh, you know, um, I'm happy with where we're at. Once, you know, I go through the book and kind of figure out some more of what this all entails, um, you know, I may adjust and, and go a little bit further with the finish. Um, but, but like I said, I'm happy with where it's at. So uh, if you're taking this class and you get that block of wood, go down to Harbor Freight, get yourself one of those grinders. They're like, 25 bucks, get a flap disc, a couple sets of flap discs. And then uh, you could probably use a jigsaw, which would be pretty cheap. 
uh, to cut out the shape that you need. Um, you know, you might even be able to print a template offline that's for a Mossberg 500. This was this was a good size for what would fit on that block. So, uh, yeah. So I think that's uh, you know something that they should consider in the future is if they're going to go small, then kind of give people a a guideline of of what they're looking for here. Um, so far, there hasn't been a lot of guidance in this class as far as, you know, what we're going to do. The book and the videos and stuff that you find online don't really match up with what we're doing. Uh, you know, week one, they're talking about the cradle uh, for checkering to build your checkering cradle. And it's like the last page of the book, you know. So um, I'm not going to be building a checkering cradle. I don't need one. And the reason why is because I've got my uh, real Avid Master Vice here. Uh, for example, you know, I can stick this down in the padded jaws, clamp it down real good, and then I can fold it right down in front of me. And uh, I don't know if you can see that, let's see. But I can fold it right down in front of me where I have perfect access to where I'm gonna be doing my checkering right here. So um, there's just, it's just not necessary for me to build a checkering cradle, especially for this particular firearm. Uh, you know, if I wanted to work like this, I could, you know, flip it up and aim it at me. So there's just, there's, there's so much versatility with this particular vice that it just doesn't make sense to build one. So, you know, if you don't have one of these vices and you're planning on being a gunsmith, you should probably get one. They're expensive, but it's worth it. And if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you know that because I use it in a lot of different classes. So, um, but yeah, so with that being said, uh, that concludes my, my week one of the FTT, man, I'm a mess. Week one, <laughs> week one of FTT 114 uh, checkering lab. This is assignment two and it was shaping, shaping the stock and also the clamping device that we're gonna be using and uh, opening up the box. And I think that's pretty much it. So that being said, uh, have a good week and good luck uh, through the rest of the course. All right, thanks, bye.